Pollution into our local waters comes from many places. It can come from air pollution, which spreads across a landscape and is often overlooked as a major non-point source of pollution. Airborne nutrients and pesticides can be transported far from their area of origin. Pollution to our stormwater can also come from erosion, which is eroded soil and sediment. This eroded soil can transport considerable amounts of nutrients, such as organic nitrogen and phosphorus, and also some pesticides, such as DDT, to rivers and streams. There are also things called non-point source pollution and point source pollution. Non-point source pollution is actually the pollution that is associated with parking lots, highways, lawns, any place in urban areas. These are areas where rainwater falls, hits areas like parking lots or lawns, gets contaminated, and then runs off. This runoff is classified as a type of non-point source pollution. The reason it is called non-point source is because it is very hard to actually point to the source or the end of pipe pollution. Point source pollution, however, can come from four different areas. These are industrial facilities, which can include manufacturing, mining, oil and gas extraction, and service industries. Pollution can come from municipal governments and other government facilities, such as military bases. Also, many agricultural facilities, such as animal feedlots, are also sources of point source pollution. It is important to note that construction activity is a type of point source pollution, specifically when talking about erosion. Point source pollution is where you actually know where the water is getting contaminated and how that water is getting contaminated by that use. So why are we so concerned about stormwater runoff and the impacts of that? Stormwater is basically rain or snow melt that hits the land during precipitation events and it doesn't actually infiltrate into the soil. Stormwater runoff is a naturally occurring event in small amounts, but if you have great areas of impervious surfaces, such as rooftops on buildings, roads, sidewalks, parking lots, all of this impervious area can significantly alter the natural hydrology of a site and change the way the water runs on that site. No longer will it actually infiltrate, but it will actually run off and it will increase the volume of runoff, also the velocity and maybe even the temperature of the runoff itself. All of this happens by just decreasing the natural infiltration capacity of the soil. When you have increasing volume and velocity of stormwater, again, that's talking about how much and how fast stormwater is running off the site, it can cause serious things to happen, things like local flooding. It can degrade the biological habitat of local streams and riverways, and also some bank erosion. There are also health impacts of reducing infiltration. Reduced infiltration can lower groundwater levels, and that affects local drinking water supplies as well. You also need to consider that when stormwater is running off the site, it is also going to pick up non-point source and point source pollutants. It can pick up things like debris, trash, also things like sediments, oils, grease, pesticides, and other toxic types of chemicals. Not only are you picking up this type of debris and pollutants, but you're also changing the water temperature itself. Besides sediments and the change in water temperature, the types of pollutants in stormwater are very detrimental to aquatic life, wildlife habitats, and human health. Music